Sports Talk Chicago. Here with John Zaglul, and we are back and ready for today's special guest. He's the voice of Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN Radio, Wednesday Night Baseball on ESPN and KBO and college basketball coverage. Please welcome John Boog Shambi to the program. Boog, it's great to have you on. How are you? Good, John. I, you know, I never thought I was going to be on a show and someone was going to uh was going to put on my resume KBO, but here we are, right? That's that's COVID and, and sports 2020. That's just the reality of it. How many cups of coffee do you drink each night to get through those games? So I haven't done a KBO game since uh, the you know late July, but I did about 30 of them. And <laughs> I, it's not, it's not, we're not doing it by the, cup we're doing it by the pot of coffee <laughs> so that's you know for us in the east you know i'd get up at 2 30 3 a.m and the game was at 5 30 it's uh yeah it's it's legit it's legit how different were those games from major league baseball like what was were there rule differences and how difficult or how much of an adjustment was that for you to kind of um get used to those games and call them so i it wasn't the rules. It was really more, you know, not knowing the players. And so my job as play by play guy is to document now, look, we, you know, our assumption is that our audience for the most part is not going to know a ton about these players. So I'm trying to do a deep dive and come up with stories. We also were, and still are, you know, we have guests. So it has a talk show type, feel to it. Um, I would say that the most challenging thing is that from a call standpoint, you're basically just watching TV and you're turning off the sound. So it's like, you know, you're, you're just calling the game and you're at the mercy of whatever cuts the director makes and you're not seeing everything. So if the bases are loaded and the balls hit into the gap, you do not have a clue whether the guy on first is going to score or not, as opposed to when you're at the field. So, you know, some of it is the similar stuff that we're dealing with now when we broadcast games um, and try and try and call them remotely. It's it's challenging for sure. Right. I was going to say, um, what's that been like for you calling MLB games remotely? And if you had to guess today, will that be the case come next year? Oh, you're hurting my heart. Yeah, asking my, <laughs> that question. Um, I, 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 so my, I, I will bluntly, it's, it kind of stinks. It's, uh, you know, our job, what makes our job fun is we're right in the middle of it. And the connection with, you know, even the people that you work with, right. having them next to you and they're not next to you. And that makes it harder and not being at the game, but also connecting with players, coaches, managers, general managers in person. Um, and then being able to deliver their stories in a manner that translates. It's, it's hard. Do I think we'll be doing it? Di- I'll tell you this. I don't know what percentage of games will be done this way, but I, my guess is that next year, not all the games will be done like this, but a good chunk of them, I would say the majority of them will be done this way. And one of the things that's just awful in terms of COVID is I do think for some networks, it's going to be, ah, it's good enough. Oh, and, okay. and I, th- and I would say, you know, like, look, to go off on a tangent, it's, you know, unfortunately, we're in this space where a lot of people, you know, and, and this is a general term, but they have a negative uh, feeling towards the media. Sure. And some of it I understand, but some of it, I think, is a lack of understanding. I'll, I'll say that people don't understand the media. They don't understand journalism. And so what I would say is. um you know, you, you should hope that we'll, we're on site. You don't want less access. Less access means it is worse for you, the fan. Like, you, ultimately, getting to hear from these players um, 
and and me being able to be there as the conduit it's, right. it's just it's you're better served as a fan if i'm there period so boog jambi here on sports talk chicago and boog uh Let's talk about the season for a minute. There's been some rule changes, but they are playing during a pandemic, which is obviously a great thing. Um, what's been your evaluation of what you've seen so far? Um, I think that it's the, a lot of the players are struggling without fans. I think the quality of play is, I, I think at times is suffering. I think it's twofold. I think the lack of energy and I think also the lack of spring training harmed, you know, pitchers. You're seeing way more injuries, that's for sure. And then I would say that the other issue is a problem that the sport has been slowly moving towards, and that is, yeah, the, the, the ball's not in play. So the home run walk strikeout thing gets tedious after a while and it's especially <laughs> tedious when there's nobody in the stands so you know when you're talking about you know f- close to 40 percent of all plate appearances are three true outcomes where the ball is literally not onto the field of play like a home run is not into the field of play like it leaves the field of play sure. so when you so When you're talking about 40% of the time, like the defense wouldn't even need to be on the field. That's a problem, man. That's a problem. (laughs) So it's just, it's, it's something it's look, one of the issues is that the games are taking longer. The amount of time between pitches is taking longer. And then the amount of time between the ball being put in play is taking longer. And and if you sum that up, the short version of it is, yeah, it's taking too long for nothing to happen. (laughs) What's your solution to that problem? If you were a commissioner, if you were in a position of power, what would you enact to kind of make that different and shorten games? I would, I think, look, I, I, I know people would freak out at this. I think the seven inning games are more palatable I think you have to look, I, I, I'm not like, I would want people smarter than myself and I would, and I know who I would ask, but like, I think you got to look at seven innings. I think you have to actually look at a clock that the game might end at a finite period of time. And then the other part that I think is imperative here, there's so much swinging and missing and these guys are throwing so hard and max effort, everything. Now you can't just start it. They have to train in this manner. But I think that the biggest thing that has to take place is a hyper type pitch clock that like it's, you've got to be able to deliver the pitch and get back out there. And I think that if you change the pacing of making them pitch, um, then I think there's a greater chance for action contact, that type of thing. It's just got to, it's got to visually look like it's moving a little bit more. Right. I mean, I, look, I'm, I know that, you know, not everybody's, a, they're fans of the home run derby, but <laughs> if you follow the home run derby a little bit, that thing was saved by instituting a clock. I mean, when it was just by outs and it was take, take, fouled <laughs> off, take, it was death. It was awful. But now it's, Three minutes. How many homers can you hit? Let's go. <laughs> so I, I, you know, and I know that there are a lot of people that'll sit there, you know, who are tourists or whatever. Look, baseball changes. Like it, it's just the way, you know, it works. And we'll be fine. But they've got to do something to move it along a little bit. More to come with Boog Shambi in just a moment. Stay tuned. This is Sports Talk Chicago. Boog Shambi, still here on Sports Talk Chicago. And Boog, I wanted to also talk about your career for a moment. Um, You started at WZBC Radio before going to WQAM, the Florida Marlins, 790 the ticket, Braves baseball, and now ESPN. Uh, Tell me about your journey through the business and how you've made it to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to do Sports Talk Radio, and I I got a chance to do it, and I really loved it. And then... um, but I always loved baseball. That was always my favorite 
sport. And I, while I was doing sports talk, I would go and do games into a tape recorder um, down in Miami. And eventually out of that, I got a job in Boise, Idaho. And off of that, I was lucky enough to uh, get the Marlins gig. So I've been very fortunate along the way. And, you know, you got to have some luck. There's no, there's no question. And yeah, I love what I get a chance to do. I love, and I especially love, you know, the one of the questions I probably get asked the most is, well, what do you like better radio uh, or TV? And <laughs> the answer is I like them both. I, you know, I, they, they, they access different skills and I like both of them. So it, it's, I, you know, with, with TV, because you can see it, you know, my job is uh, in that spot, I think, to elevate the, the content. And in on a radio you know, broadcast, I am trying to paint the picture and document it as much as possible because people can't see it. What's your number one piece of advice to someone today trying to break into the business? If you want to be on the air, go somewhere and be on the air. Don't like if you want to be on the air, if that's your your want, like don't go be a production assistant um, somewhere for two years because you got to go find some place to go be on the air. That's that would be my thought. And Boog, before we finish up today, last question. Can you tell me about the Dan Lebitard suggested calls that you've used on broadcast before? What were some of your favorite? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) The one that was that was funny was uh, that you know they were kind of ahead of the curve with Brock Meyer, and I I ended up using it, but I said I I asked Matt Holiday, what do you think of my home run call when Matt Holiday was still playing with the Cardinals? What do you think of the home run call of get me a small Italian boat because that ball is gondola and. <laughs> When when I saw him later that year, Matt Holiday, I said, "How are you swinging the bat?" He said, "I need a few more gondolas." So I knew that that <laughs> that, that, that it had made an, an impact, and I and I did actually use it that night. So it was fun. Well, Boog, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, great talk, and let's do it again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me.